Hi, welcome. I'm Mary Irwin. I'm a professional makeup artist. I've been working for probably four to five thousand years. I'm not totally sure. Um, living and working in New York and Miami and Dallas and a whole bunch of other places. And today uh, I thought I would film kind of my daily tutorial, but also to show you the brands that I like, the brands that I use on myself. There's a lot of crossover with the things that I love for myself and the things that I love for my kit. And also I just wanted to kind of show you my favorite skincare products and the stuff that I use every day that I tend to have duplicates of in my kit. Um, I got all the way through my skincare regimen and then realized that I wasn't recording. So we're gonna do this again. Start with Bioderma, all over the face. I really like to cleanse because I don't know what models have on when they show up. I don't know if they've got some sort of crazy acid product that's gonna interact with the products that I use. I don't know if what they have is like 90% silicone and anything I put over the top of it is just going to fight. Like you just don't know. So unless somebody specifically requests that I don't take off what they have on, I will take off what they have on. Once I've cleansed with Bioderma, I like to follow up with the Lemieux O2 Calming Gel. This has aloe, white tea, and chamomile, along with 18 botanical extracts that help to soothe and calm irritated skin, which I find to be a huge help for a skin like mine that's prone to redness or irritation. Um, it also kind of acts not quite as a base, not quite as a primer, but I do find that product that you put over the top of it really, really likes to stick once you've done that. For hydration for most skin types, I've been using Blue Lagoon Hydrating Cream. This has um, aloe in it as well. It has shea butter, it has algae, it has geothermal spring water from the Blue Lagoon in Iceland. Um, and I find that the texture is nice. It's not as heavy as say like skin food or skin food light even, and it's not as greasy as Umbriolis, but it does provide about the same amount of hydration and it really sinks in nicely, not just into the skin, but over pretty much everything that I've put it into. This, obsessed. I watched a class that Michaela Wariebi was teaching, who's an amazing um, educator and makeup artist, and she did half of the face with a jade roller and talked about the importance of lymphatic drainage and how you know, it doesn't necessarily look like it's doing a lot, but if I were to do half the face and then not do the other half of the face, you would see a big difference. And I also find too that I don't necessarily do this on myself every day, but I would say that I do this on easily 75% of the models that sit in my chair, especially if it's beauty or anything that's just face focused. Um, you know, if it's advertising anything like that, then ab or red carpet, then absolutely, um, you get some sort of lymphatic drainage. And I find also that if you can, keeping this in the fridge for yourself, oh, big, huge difference. Um, I notice a big difference in the puffiness under my eyes, the puffiness under really everybody's eyes, just because cold constricts. So the colder you can keep this, the more calming and soothing it'll be. Also, it just feels good. The Blue Lagoon Lip Balm is, I'm obsessed. I can't stop putting it on. I stole it from my kit. I use it for myself now, and I got another one for my kit because I'm obsessed. Um, it has aloe, algae, vitamin E, super hydrating. It's got oils in it, but it's not oily. It's really nice for when somebody comes in and they've got that kind of dry, dehydrated, flaky lip that just nothing wants to stick to and you just can't get the, the dead skin off of. So I like to put this on almost as a mask and let it sit for a while. And I find that it makes a huge difference in how um, moisture absorbs into the lip. Then I like to do a little mist of the Wonder Gloss Face Aperitif. And I also like to set the makeup with this too. Mm, this is the orange. It's super nice and light. B3, Nourishing Under Eye Cream. I used to not use very much eye cream because I felt like the makeup moved, 
but in the last maybe two years or so, I've really gotten into eye cream, particularly for anything where the face is gonna be shown in close up, but also using hydration and using a bit of a drier concealer over the top of it makes a big difference in how the makeup wears, how the under eye looks throughout the day, um, getting like a little lymphatic drainage through here makes a big difference. As far as primers, I do targeted priming. I'll do, I'll prime in spots. So this is my general go-to if I need the makeup to really last. And I don't necessarily do it all over the face. I'll do it like through here, through here, maybe a little on the forehead, but I don't do all of this. I will, if somebody has pores, like I have some pores that bother me because makeup sinks into them. And so I'll use a pore filler. This is, what is this one? This is one from Milk. So you also have to be aware of your ingredients. This has a lot of silicone in it, which means that you can't use a water-based foundation over it. They're going to fight. Oil and silicone don't like each other very much. So that's my basic skincare routine that I do on myself and pretty much everyone. Viseart eye primer, obsessed. I'm not a big eye primer person. I pretty much use Viseart and Air Atelier. Those are the only two that I use, but the Viseart one is designed for the Viseart shadows. And I do find that it works just a little bit better for those particular shadows. For everything else, use what you like. So we're here. Um, nothing on, just skincare.